All right, everyone, let's start studying Fourier series. So I've been looking forward to this for a while. Um, let's see. So let's start by considering tau periodic functions. So we draw a function, and it repeats, and it's tau periodic. This means that if I advance the argument by an amount tau, uh, the function is equal to what it was uh, before I advanced it by an amount tau. So in particular, I can create sets of uh, functions that are tau periodic. And with these sets of tau periodic functions, I can do amazing things. So in particular, we can take um, sinusoidal functions that are tau periodic and create sets of sinusoidal functions. And so we could have something like uh, cosine 2 pi t over tau, cosine 4 pi t over tau, cosine 6 pi t over tau. All of these functions would be um, tau periodic. They would repeat after a time tau. So the amazing thing is I can take these sets of uh, sinusoidal functions that are tau periodic and combine them to create almost any arbitrary function. Almost any arbitrary function can be um, expanded as a series of sinusoidal tau periodic functions. And that is essentially what Fourier series are. So I have f of t is equal to the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of a coefficient a sub n times cosine n omega t, and remember n is going from 0 to infinity, plus b sub n sine n omega t. So this expression right here is the expression for a Fourier series. Now the trick for uh, this series is figuring out what values to use for a of n, a sub n, and what values to use for b sub n. Uh, that's the hard part. Uh, fortunately, it's been worked out for you, and so the formula for the coefficients of these sinusoidal functions, a sub n for cosine and b sub n for sine, the coefficients are given by um, a sub n is a sub n is equal to 2 over tau, times the integral from minus tau over 2 to tau over 2 of f of t cosine o n omega t uh, dt. And that's true for all n greater than or equal to 1. So that's the formula for the a sub n's, the coefficients of the cosine functions. And then uh, for the coefficients of the sine functions, we have a similar formula. We have the b sub n's are equal to 2 over tau, uh, times the integral from minus tau over 2 to tau over 2 of f of t sine n omega t dt for n greater than or equal to 1. Now, uh, the n equals 0 case is sort of interesting. Uh, for n equals 0, uh, you can imagine that the b sub n's, the b sub n coefficients don't really, or coefficient doesn't really matter because um, sine is equal to uh, sine of 0 is equal to 0, so the integral is 0 for the n equals 0 case, so it doesn't really matter what b sub n is, that term would be 0. Uh, for the a sub 0 case, uh, we have a special formula. Uh, a sub 0 is equal to 1 over tau times the integral uh, from minus tau over 2 to tau over 2 of f of t dt. So uh, that's how you get the a0 coefficient in the series. So with that, let's uh, do an example. The example in the book, uh, 5.4 on Fourier series, is as follows. Uh, so we're going to do a Fourier series for a rectangular pulse. And as you're seeing appear on the screen, you're to find the Fourier series for the rectangular pulse shown in the figure in terms of the period tau, the pulse height, f max, and the duration of the pulse, delta tau. So here I've reproduced the figure, and you can see that the uh, 
I've indicated the half width first, delta tau over 2, or the whole time the pulse is high is delta tau, and the height of the pulse is f max, so it's, and the periodicity of the pulse is tau. So I've indicated everything on this drawing here. So let's reproduce the drawing on the next slide and then find the a sub zero term. So I'm redrawing the uh, figure that shows what the pulse looks like with uh, f max and delta tau over 2 and the, the length when it's high, when the pulse is high, delta tau, and the periodicity tau. And here you see that um, the zero coefficient for the cosine term a sub zero is by formula equal to 1 over tau times the integral from minus tau over 2 to tau over 2 of f of t dt. And that um, if I'm going to integrate from minus tau over 2 to tau over 2, if you look at the, um, at the figure, you'll notice that the integral is only, is only non-zero uh, when the pulse is high. So I don't have to integrate over the whole interval. I could just integrate while the pulse is high. So that would be from time minus delta tau over 2 to delta tau over 2. And during that time, um, during that time, uh, the pulse will be at a constant value, f max. And so this integral becomes a simple product of the height of the pulse times the width of the pulse. That is f max times delta tau. And I'm carrying along the, the 1 over tau from the start. Actually, it's missing uh, in the middle there. I guess I still need to have a, a, a 1 over tau. There, I'll put it in on the fly. Is there sort of 1 over tau? I don't have a good stylus right now. So, uh, so the formula winds up being f max delta tau over tau. That's the formula for the zero coefficient of the, of the constant term of the Fourier series. Now the more interesting terms are the uh, are all the other terms, the non-constant terms in the Fourier series. So for a sub n, um, we're, we have the formula 2 over tau minus tau over 2 to tau over 2 f of t cosine n omega t dt. And f of t again is just f max. And instead of integrating again over the whole interval, I really only have to integrate when the function is non-zero, which is minus delta tau over 2, written in green, to delta tau over 2. So if I integrate over that small interval, um, I know that the function at over that interval for this pulse is equal to f max, and I can plug that in. And that's exactly what I've done. Okay, so let's uh, rewrite what I just came up with on the next slide. So, um, I have uh, a sub n is 2 over tau times this integral minus tau over 2 to tau over 2 f of t cosine n omega t, which is equal to 2 over tau, and I just explained why you can fill in the minus tau over 2 to minus delta tau over 2 to delta tau over 2, and during that interval the function value is f max cosine n omega t dt. So, if we evaluate this, um, the integral is, uh, we notice that, um, we notice that, uh, it's too bad I don't have a picture here, but since this is an even function, instead of going mi minus delta tau over 2 to delta tau over 2, I could just go from 0 to delta tau over 2 and multiply by 2 because uh, the value of the function from minus delta tau over 2 to 0 is equal to the value of the function from 0 to delta tau over 2, so I can just take the half interval and multiply by 2. And uh, I can do that any time I have an even integrand, and so I will do that. So then let's rewrite what we've got and maybe push it a little further. I have... Um, So now I have a sub n, and I have I, the 2 that came out because I changed my limits of integration uh, makes the coefficient on the outside now equal to uh, 4, right? Because I, I already had, 
I already had a, um, a 2 on the outside, and now I'm pulling out another 2 because I'm only integrating over half the interval. And the f max that was inside the integral uh, before, that f max from, oh boy, you're getting used to this again, the f max from, there it is, the f max from there, uh, that uh, can pull out of the integral because it's constant. And um, and so then I'm left with I'm left with four f max over tau. That's the tau from the original formula times the integral from zero to delta tau over two, and I have my um, cosine n omega t dt. But it might be easier if instead of omega I plug in tau now. So instead of n omega t, I have n two pi over tau t, uh, which is the same thing. And so evaluating that, I get that um, a sub n is equal to 4 f max over tau times, and now I'm doing the integral, tau over 2 pi n. Uh, that's because I have this 2 pi n over tau on the inside, times sine of 2 pi n t over tau from 0 to delta tau over 2. So that's the, that's the solution for a sub n so far. So let's rewrite that. a sub n is 4f max over tau times, uh, times tau over 2 pi n sine 2 pi, uh, 2 pi n t over tau from 0 to delta tau over 2. So now let's evaluate that. We get all the constant stuff, and uh, at at zero, at the um, at the zero limit, of course everything's zero. And then at the delta tau over two limit, I just plug in the delta tau over two, and then I'm left with this delta tau over two here, and I have a two and a two there, so I think I should cancel those. So I cancel the um, I cancel the twos, and then what am I left with? Then we're left with two f max over pi n times sine of um, sine of pi times n times delta tau over tau. So there, that's a that's a very nice pretty result. Now this is the bulk of the work in a Fourier series. You have to find the coefficients. In this case, these coefficients are the a sub n's. That is, they are the coefficients of the cosine terms in the Fourier series. But I'm also curious about what happens to the b sub n's. Um, in this case, since the function I am um, finding for a series for is completely even, uh, it turns out that the odd terms, the sine terms, in the uh, Fourier series are all zero. All the coefficients should be set to zero for the b sub n's. So here I have the formula. Um, b sub n is equal to 2 over tau minus tau over 2 to tau over 2 f max sine uh, n omega t dt. And, um, and so you can see that um, when I integrate from minus delta tau over 2 to delta tau over 2, I'm integrating a sine function over uh, symmetric limits. And a sine function is an odd function. And when you integrate an odd function over symmetric limits, uh, you get zero. That's true for all odd functions integrated over symmetric limits, which proves that all the b sub n's are therefore equal to zero. So the b's are all equal to zero, and I found a zero and all the a sub n's in the previous slides. And so you see we found the whole uh, entire Fourier series for this pulse. So f of t, the Fourier series for the function f of t uh, for this pulse, is a0, um, let's see, is uh, a0 plus this sum from n equals 1 to infinity of um, a sub n cosine n omega t. And we already found that a sub 0 is f max delta, t, uh, delta tau over tau, and a sub n is 2f max over pi n sine pi n delta tau over tau, and that's for n greater than or equal to 1. So we have the whole solution uh, for the function now. 
So the next thing we're supposed to do, um, it says next, using the values tau equals 1, f max equals 1, and delta tau equals 0 0.25, plot f of t as well as the sum of the first 11 terms. And uh, let's see, did I do that on these? Hold on. Yeah, so I didn't do that on these slides, but I'm sure I have this on a PowerPoint. So I will show you uh, the I will show you what happens with this Fourier series uh, for the sum of the first eleven terms on a separate video.